Hello guys and welcome back to Sam's Tech Channel. In the previous installment, we went over a breadth first search example. Uh, now to complement that example, we're gonna be going over a, a depth first example. So in the, uh, in the description, I've left a link to the breadth first search video if you've missed it. But if you haven't, then let's get on with the video. So I'm going to be doing the same example that I did when I was explaining BFS. So in this example, once again, we have the starting node right here, node zero. And we have our frontier, which is right here. It's going to be represented as an array, just as it was before. Uh, if you look here, you can see a legend that explains exactly what the, the various colors mean. Uh, anyways, the first step of the algorithm is to take the starting node, the node that we start at, and to put it into our frontier. So when we're implementing a queue using an array, we need a front index and a rear index, just like we did before. Now when we end queue, we slide the rear index forward one and we take the value that we wish to put into our frontier and we insert it. So now our frontier looks like this. Given that our frontier is no longer empty, we need to dequeue our frontier. So this is where the main difference between DFS and BFS comes in. When doing a, a BFS dequeue, we simply take this, uh, this front here and we slide it forward. That's how we dequeue in BFS. In DFS, however, it's a little bit different. Instead of taking this front and moving it forward, we actually take the rear and move it backwards. And you'll see that this has a huge effect on the, on the order in which we extract things from the frontier. So we're gonna take this rear index and we're gonna slide it backwards. And now we're gonna take this value and we're gonna assign it to our current node. So our current node is now zero and we're gonna update our graph accordingly. So now zero is our current node and now we're gonna, we're gonna expand node zero. So once again, we look at the first node, which is the first successor of the current node. And we ask the big question, is this node our goal node? Now clearly it's not. So that means we need to add this node to our frontier. So that's what we're gonna do. Once again, we increment our rear node. And now this value instead of zero becomes one. It replaces the zero that was previously there. Then we're gonna to go to our next successor of node zero, which is node two. And then we pop the big question. Is this node the goal node? Well, once again, it's not the goal node. So this node now needs to be added to the frontier. So that's what we're gonna do. Once again, take this rear pointer, move it forward one slot, and add the new node to the frontier. So repeat this process for node four, which is the next successor of node zero. Pop the big question, is it the goal node? Nope. So now we're gonna put it in our frontier. So we're gonna move the rear value. And then we're going to put in number four. So far, so good. Notice that this is actually the exact same process that we went through when we were doing the BFS example. So moving on. The next, uh, the next uh, successor of node zero is this node five, which 
It's right over here. And then we pop the question. Is node five the goal node? Well, clearly it's not. So we need to add that to the frontier. We move this rear node over again. Then we're gonna write five right there. We're gonna look at the final successor of node zero, which is node three. Oops. Pop the question. Node three is clearly not the goal node. Add it over here. Increment the rear. And then we add in node three. So we now get to the dequeuing operation. Given that we have exhausted all of the successor nodes of this guy, there's nowhere else that we can go from here. So now we take this guy and we mark him as a dead node. So I'm just gonna do that right now, mark him as a dead node using the red. He's dead. He will never be visited again. He is dead forever, D-E-A-D. -E now the big difference between BFS and DFS comes in right now. The way that we would have handled the selection of the next node in BFS is when we're choosing between these five, we would have dequeued in the following way. We would have slid the front pointer over and then we would have popped number one. DFS is different. Instead of dequeuing number one, we actually take this rear and we slide it backwards. And then we DQ number three. So we're gonna do just that. You're gonna see that the order in which we explore the nodes is much different. So our current node now is node number three. So we're gonna mark up node number three over here. And now we need to explore all of the nodes from node three. So we're gonna do just that. From node three, we can see that we can't go backwards because this guy is dead. And we don't visit dead nodes. So instead, we go to node two, we pop this guy in the queue. So what do we do? Well, we get this out of the way for a second, and then we increment our rear value. We need to erase that. And then we put in our node two here. Now that we've explored node two, we can mark this guy as another dead node because he's been completely explored. So we're gonna do just that. See you later, node three. Now, once again, we're gonna DQ. Now remember, when we DQ, we just slide the rear back and we pop our friend number two right out. Boom. Now our current node becomes node two. So from node two, we expand all of the successors. So we first, we expand to the first node and then we pop the question. Is this node the goal node? Well, clearly it isn't. So we add this node to our frontier. Now we just need to get rid of this, slide over our rear node again, our rear index again. Add number one to the frontier. And then we continue expanding our node two. 
we look at the goal node right here, node 6, we ask, is this node the goal node? Well, it is. So therefore, we have successfully found a path between the starting node and the ending node. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out my videos on my BFS and DFS MATLAB demos. I've also made a video on Dijkstra's algorithm, as well as a video on probabilistic roadmaps. I've included a link in the description to my video on breadth-first search. Be sure to check that out if you haven't already. Thanks again.